Okay, so today, guys, <clears throat> we're going to be going over uh, forces and motion and free body diagrams. Forces and motion, free body diagrams. So with this, just a quick recap, all right, and what we're going to need to be getting out of this. Um, understand that Newton's second law is net force is equal to mass times acceleration. All right, describes the relationship between net force on an object, its mass, and acceleration. If um, you need to be able, sorry, you need to be able to represent uh, all the forces acting on an object using a free body diagram. Understand that friction is a resistive force that goes to the opposite of motion. So if I'm pushing something to the right, what direction would friction be going? Left. If I was pushing something forward, what direction would back okay good understand or distinguish between static friction and kinetic friction guys remember what we said uh, there was two types of equilibrium there was static and dynamic what did static mean when we were talking about that the object was say it at rest good and then what was what did it mean if something was in dynamic equilibrium yeah, the object is moving. So pretty much static, guys, is going to be the same thing. All right, an object at rest, and kinetic is going to be the object's moving. All right? So what we need to know, all right, just uh, some vocab keywords. Force is a push or a pull, Newton's second law. Um, if I push on something with a certain force, all right, the more – or yeah, let's see. How, how do I want to wear this? Uh, acceleration is directly proportional to the net force, inversely proportional to the mass. So the for an object that's the same size, if I push one of them with more force, it's going to accelerate more. If I push one with less force, it's going to accelerate less. Then if I took um, two different size objects, one larger, one smaller, and I apply the same force to both of them, well, the one with more mass is going to accelerate less. All right, the one with smaller mass will accelerate more okay um and the acceleration is the rate at which an object's velocity changes static friction this is the type of friction that keeps objects at rest an example of when you're trying to move a stationary object such as pushing a refrigerator across the floor all right static friction keeps it in place static friction opposes the direction of motion and then kinetic friction is a frictional force that acts between two two surface but one all right we have something that is moving this time we'll have something that's moving and then normal force uh normal force is the force that surfaces exert on each other to prevent solid objects from passing through each other normal force is a contact force when two surfaces are in contact they exert a normal force on each other, perpendicular to the contacting surfaces. So for our purposes, we're going to be dealing with everything on a flat horizontal plane. So if I went like this, here's my box. All right, this is my free body diagram. No matter what, oh, that line is not where I want it to be. Okay, so we have a box resting on a surface. What direction does weight go, guys? Down. Now, if the object does not fall downward, right, there's no motion, what does that mean about the forces? They have to be what? It has to be equal. All right. Another word we use would be balance. So how I like to do it is I like to say, okay, these two forces are equal. I put a little equal sign through them. My top and bottom are good. And this dude would be my force of gravity, or what we call weight. And, good bless you, and Fn, the normal force. So, guys, what is the equation for Fg? Mass times gravity. And we're using, for the most part, we use 10 for our calculations. So, if I know what the mass is, if I said the mass was 20, what would the weight be? 20 times 10? 200. So if I said, hey, the mass of an object is 20 kilograms, what is the normal force? Very good. Why? Because it's the same as the weight. 
it's the same as the weight out, right? So you're gonna to want to keep that in mind for what we're gonna be dealing with. Okay, <clears throat> so then it, uh, we have the link provided, okay, that it asks you to go to so we can take a look at this little simulation piece. All right, now, from here, from here, what we're gonna be asking us to do is, please take a look at, all right, it says, uh, what happens to the force of friction when an applied force is added? So look, I'm going to drag this over and notice what is happening to the applied force arrow, the arrow on the right side, what is it doing? Is it staying the same, increasing, decreasing? Increasing, increasing. good. Now, now, if applied force is increasing, tell me what happens to the friction force, which is the left arrow. Increasing. It is also increasing. Do you guys think they look pretty equal? Yes. And do you want oh, and do you want to know why they are equal right now? Or how do I know that they're hundred percent equal? Does anyone know why they have to be hundred percent equal right now? Not necessarily that. The force. Well there we have the applied force on the right, we have friction force left. But let me ask, is this thing moving? No, so we didn't apply en enough force yet to get this thing to start moving. So if we know the mass of the thing, which is down here, this 100 kilograms, and we know the um, coefficient of kinetic friction and coefficient of static friction, we can calculate exactly how much force is needed in order to get this thing to start moving. So, well, we can do that, but... First one, first question, All right, what happens to the force of friction as the implied force increases? So you guys tell me right now, what happens to the FF as we increase the applied force? Look at, all right, good. So uh, the FF increases, so friction force, F sub F, increases at the, would you say at the same rate as the applied force? Yeah. yeah. So the friction force increases at the same rate as the applied force. Friction force increases at the same rate as the applied force. So you're going to write that in. Friction force increases at the same rate as the applied force so for that we I use F A P P so really all we're gonna need there guys is that friction force increases at the same rate as the applied force now question two asks what type of friction is represented in this situation explain how you know well look back at the vocab so if we look back at the vocab there's static friction and kinetic friction which one do you think it is why do you think static? Because why? Okay. Correct, because the object is still stationary. So, static friction. Because the object is stationary. or the object is at rest, however you want to say it. Okay, now number four. It says, uh, or step four, applied, slide the applied force slider until the box starts to move. Make sure you have sum of forces box checked in the menu bar on the right. And then guiding question three, what is the value of the applied force once this thing starts to move? Hmm. Okay, so for this, I'm going to hit clear, and it's going to record. All right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to push, 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 push. Okay, now let's go to playback. Let's play this back a little bit. And now let's go to slow.
Uh, we are going to we had they said to click on the uh, sum of the forces right here, which is your net force. So if I'm increasing this ever so slowly or ever so slightly. We can then take a look, go to the playback. Now, if I go so hitting this slow, you see, boom. So right there at about 491 is the first time you see the green arrow, which is your net force arrow. So the value of applied force at that threshold. What they mean by the threshold is when it starts to move. So we're going to write 491 newtons. What direction was that going, by the way? Right. To the right. Okay. Now it says find the value of friction at that threshold. Well, I don't see any numbers anywhere that we can have that would give us a value. But guess what? By the end of this, we'll be able to figure out what that value is. Okay. So then we'll, we'll so we're going to leave this one blank for a second and we'll come back to that. All right, it asks how does the value of friction force uh, before the box starts moving compare to the frictional force after it starts moving? Which one's static, which one's kinetic? So, what they're asking you guys um what happens to the friction? Is it larger before it starts moving or after it starts moving? So let's take a look. All right, look at the vector size. You see FF on the left? Keep watching, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. Now what happened to it? Remember, friction force was pretty much the same size as the applied force. But once we got it to start moving, what happened to it? It decreased. So you want to have friction force is larger before it starts moving, and it decreases once it starts moving. And then which one is kinetic and which one's static? Which one's kinetic and which one's static? What do you think? Static basically meant you were at what? Yeah, it meant you were at rest. So friction force is FF is larger before it starts moving, before the box starts moving. And Friction force decreases once it starts moving. So which one, all right, which one do you think was static and which one did you think was kinetic? Before it starts moving would be which one? Static. Good. So I'm just going to write static under here. And once it starts moving, kinetic. Okay. Making sure the sum of the forces was checked above. Why is the sum of the forces or the net force less than the applied force? Why is this green arrow, guys, smaller than the applied force? Well, real quick, what is net force again? Do you remember what net force was from our notes? Good. So net force is the sum of all the forces acting. All right. It's the sum of all the forces acting on an object. And yes, it will determine the motion. All right. So with that, 
Net force is the sum of all the forces. <clears throat> it will determine the motion. So if the net force is to the right, what direction is the object going to move? To the right. So you saw in the diagram, right? you saw in this little simulation piece here, the net force is in the right. And what direction did this thing start moving? To the right. Good. So F net is the sum of all forces. All right. Um, what do you do? How do you find the net force, though? Do we same direction, force in the same direction, you do what? Good. So forces in the same direction, you add. And then what do you do with, if they're in the opposite direction? Good. Forces in opposite directions you subtract now with this um, all right so net force sum of all the forces forces in the same direction you add force in the opposite directions you subtract well, uh, still, why is the net force smaller than the applied force? Yeah, because we have the applied force going to the right, friction force going to the left. So they're, they're already going in the opposite directions. So we got to subtract them. And that's why the net force is a smaller number. <clears throat> All right. Force in the same direction you add, force in the opposite direction you subtract. So in this case, the net force would have been equal to the applied force minus friction force. So yeah, it should make sense that it's going to be less than all right, the applied force. And then if you can just do me a quick little favor. Also, I would like you guys to just sketch in a quick little free body diagram. Fg down, normal force up. Those two things should be equal to each other. All right, the applied force to the right, friction to the left. And then the net force was to which direction? Yeah, it'd be to the right. Why? Because force is in the opposite direction and we subtract. Weight and normal force are equal, so they don't really matter right now. And since this vector was much larger than this one, if I take this minus this, we're going to be left with our net force. Okay, so you guys will, you guys will from here be asked to do these last two pages. And this is very, very simple. It's literally just going to ask, why does the box move instantly? Here's a key. Um, use the vocabulary key word static friction in your answer. So essentially, you guys would do turn on this guy here, clear everything else. Oh, that's on record. We don't want that clear. Where are you at? Why is it reset all everything? Jesus. So by resetting all, we put on no friction. Once we start to push this thing, what happens? Yeah. Now, the other question was, does it at, does it move instantly? No. No ice. I think it moves actually pretty much. Well, if it didn't move instantly, if you didn't think it moved instantly. Do you think it should? 
Not necessarily. <laughs> so if there is no... Yes. <clears throat> so if there was no friction force acting on this, it should move instantly. Now, may it, it may not move very, very much at first if you use a small force. Remember, friction opposes the force of motion. So my other question would be, if I put on the sum of all the force vectors, you see this? Net force and acceleration. They're pretty much simultaneous, right? <laughs> so if there was no friction, should they move instantaneously? Yeah, because there's no, nothing going against it. So it should start moving instantaneously. All right. Now, before, we didn't quite answer this one right here. We said we'd come back to this. We said we'd come back to this number here. Okay. So after you guys had answered that problem, we're going to look at this, this table here. In the simulation, you guys can... All right, we put it back to wood. We can put the sum of force vectors right now. Okay. Now, four right this second... You can change the small crate. We can change it to a textbook. We can change it to a refrigerator. We can change it to a sleepy dog. Okay. But down at the bottom, we are given what the mass is. U sub K. Mu sub K is 0 0.5. Mu sub K stands for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Mu sub S is the coefficient of static friction. So we're going to put it back onto the small crate because that is what comes up first. All right, so tell me, what is the mass of the small crate down at the bottom? One hundred. Okay, good. So we'd write a hundred in there. What about mu sub s down here? What is mu sub s? Zero point five. And then what about mu sub k? Right down there. 0 0.3. Good. So those things you guys just get straight from, all right? Those things we get straight from here. So now we're going to, boom. It says to calculate the normal force. Normal force is mass times gravity. The friction force all right, but static friction force. So static friction force is going to be equal to the normal force times, all right, the coefficient of static friction. And then the kinetic friction force, kinetic friction force is going to be equal normal force times, all right, the kinetic coefficient of friction. Okay, so right now let's calculate our normal force. So for right now, guys, G, I want you to use 9.8 for this first one because I, it does come into play here. A lot of times we use 10 because the numbers come out usually a little bit cleaner. Uh, can you wait two minutes? Okay. So for this, let's calculate the normal force. Mass times gravity, 980 newtons. Now, if I take all right, the normal force, remember that normal force was equal to the weight of the object, which is why we're doing mass times gravity. So for the static friction force, you're taking this number, timesing it by the coefficient of static friction. So here we're going to do 980 times 0.5, and this comes out to be 490 newtons. And this one here came out to be 490 newtons. Okay, now 
what we would look at next or figure out next is the uh, the kinetic friction force, which is the same thing. You're going to do normal force of 980 times it by the kinetic friction, all right, the coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k, so 0 0.3. Zero point three, and when I multiply that out together, I get a value of two hundred and ninety four newtons. Okay, you guys can finish the rest of that, but before we do, I, the reason I wanted to show you guys this is because it goes right back to that one question we didn't fill in, question three. Okay, so what is what did we say was the force needed in order to get this thing to start moving? We said it was 400 and 491 newtons. All right, what did we just solve for as the maximum threshold? All right, or what did we say was the maximum force of static friction? Go right back to the table that we just solved for. Nope, that's kinetic friction. Yep. So static friction, maximum force of static friction is 490. It took us to get to 491 in order to get this thing to start moving. So if I got this to be at exactly 490, do you think it would have started moving? Why? Because they would have been balanced. So basically, you can push this thing with 10 newtons of force, it won't budge. You can push it with 150, 250, 350, 450. It's not, in and you can even push at 490. You can even push at 490. But as soon as you go above 490, that is the amount of force it's going to take for you to get this thing to start moving. So that is why this was so important to look at. All right. So... For this one, I'm just going to show this again right here. The mass was 100 kilograms. The normal force was equal to the object's weight, which is mass times gravity. So we did 100 times 9.8, which gave us this 980 newtons. Then what we did, all right, the... Static friction force was equal to that normal force that we just saw for times mu sub s. So 980 times 0 0.5. And that's where we got that 490 from. So basically, you push with anything less than 490 and exactly 490, this thing would not have moved. So, all right, in order for it to move, I'm just going to add this in there. So in order for it to move, you have to go above 490 newtons. Now that should make sense to why we have this. Now, remember, we couldn't figure out a number. We couldn't figure out what the number was right here. Well, we found that out. We found that out. So the friction force, all right, the kinetic friction force is the same concept, normal force times coefficient of kinetic friction. 980 times 0 0.3 gave us 294 newtons. So as soon as, what happened, guys, was as soon as we got past this 490, right? As soon as we got past 490, whoop, as soon as we get past 490, right? We got that 491. That thing started to move, and 
f sub f dropped, and we couldn't. We did. There was no reading here to be able to tell what that was. But what we figured out now is because we know what the coefficient of sliding or kinetic friction was is 0.3, and we know the normal force you multiply them together. That answer here would have been 294 newtons. And what direction would friction need to go? To the left, because it has to go opposite of the motion. All right. So why does friction drop once you go above 490? Because it starts moving. So friction before it started moving was go, went all the way up to 490. Once you go above that, it drops down to 294. Okay. So friction drops to 294 once it starts moving. Because the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, is less. And then from there, you could have we could have calculated the net force. You could calculate the net force right now. If I said, hey, we're pushing with 491. And now if the friction net all of a sudden dropped to 294, you subtract it and you would get a an F net Two ninety four, and that'd be one ninety seven. If we needed to determine what the net force was, <clears throat> so two ninety four minus, I'm sorry, four ninety one minus two ninety four would again one ninety seven to the right because the object was moving overall to the right. All right, so you guys, your last little bit. Then all you're gonna have to do is, okay. Figure these out, which is very simple because you're going to basically follow the follow this pattern here. But we just change the small crate to the file cabinet. So you can write those in real quick. 50 kg. So at this table, we're writing in the, the mass of the file cabinet, its coefficient of friction, static, and kinetic. So static is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and the coefficient of kinetic is 0 0.2. And then they said the refrigerator, 200 kg as the mass. Coefficient of static friction is 0 0.5. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.2. So now, remember, you're going to have to do this. 50. Now, if you guys want to use the other ones, if you want to use 10 because the numbers are super easy to use, awesome. Or if you're just going to use the calculator, you can use the 9.8. That's fine. All right. That's fine. And then you just have to answer these last two questions afterwards. All right, how does the value you calculated for the maximum force of static friction for the small crate compare to your answer from question three, which was this? All right, how does the maximum value of static friction for the small crate compare to your answer for question three? Well, we figured that we needed to get 491 in order to get this thing start moving. Why is that important? Because we calculated that the maximum force of static friction was 490. So basically, you're going to, like, we kind of half answered that. If the maximum force of static friction for the small crate is 490, you need to go above 490 to get the thing to start moving. That's why it was important. And then number nine asks, what do you notice about the relationship between the static and kinetic friction? Well, pretty much in all these guys, static friction is greater than the kinetic friction. Why is that the case? Or why do you think that is the case? All right. And you can just basically say, um, at the microscopic level, 
in order to get the molecules in motion, you got to overcome um, – it's going to take more force in order to get the mo molecules to start moving. And once they are moving, it's going to take less force. All right, so you guys are going to finish that. Answer question eight, nine. If you're not sure with nine, you can you can do a little research, look that up. All right, you guys will submit that and place that up there. When you are done, now you may go what? Uh, you, don't, you don't necessarily need a Chromebook. You just need a calculator to finish uh, this little section here. We pretty much already answered question eight and number nine. If you wanted to just look up some, you'll be good. All right. Okay. Can you go back to step three page? Yep. What are we um, 